This is Twit. So I, you know, the satellite thing's interesting. I don't know how we're going to test it, uh, but I think if if you know, it's a it's a great thing to have. T-Mobile announced something similar with Starlink the week before, knowing Apple was probably was about to announce this. We now know that Apple will be partnering with Global Star. Partnering's even more, really, because they say they'll pay for 95% of the costs associated with additional launches that Global Star is going to have to make to put satellites up to do this service. So Apple's getting in the satellite business, in effect. Yeah. Too many people are getting into the satellite business. There's I a agree. There's a finite also, amount of space I agree. around the planet. We talked about this with Rod Pyle today on the radio show. Uh, everybody's launching satellites. In fact, so much so that in the next Elon Musk Starlink launch, is there's another satellite company piggybacking on that. And the thing is, it's all overlapping, right? It's like we got f four different companies doing the same thing. And, of course, each of them has to have their own satellite. This is so much of a problem. The FCC announced uh, this week that they were trying to establish a rule requiring people to get their old satellites out of the sky. They say, we want to make it so you have five years to either deorbit it or launch it into space or something because they're going to just jam the place up. Which is a good idea, but it's a non-starter because they place the onus on the country yeah. responsible for not the, the launch, maker. not the company. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, unless every country starts putting down a huge bond for every satellite a company launches into space, they're going to get to a point where a company has gone out of business and now they're stuck with a $10 billion bill to deorbit a bunch of satellites. I, I, I know space is big. <laughs> we know that. Even it's bigly. orbital space is bigly. Big. <laughs> but... It seems like everybody and their brothers, I mean, thousands. Is this the wrong way to make a Dyson Sphere, people? Can we just have a <laughs> can we just pause, take a break? This is not what they meant. Crazy. Um, but you know we'll see ads in a year from Apple from somebody who was on a mountain, broke their toe, and they couldn't get help, and they got satellite help. It's, it could be me, to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. okay. Me and my new watch. The, I mean, I think I would want that, and I think the crash detection is interesting. Both the watch and the phone have uh, more accelerometers, uh, better accelerometers, and and yeah. also uh, some sort of impact detection thing, right? What they yeah, algorithms. In, yeah. in case you come to a sudden arboreal stop. <laughs> well, that coupled a little, with a little higher, West Wing reference there. I got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> has a higher G-rated sensor coupled with the new algorithms. Yes. Right? Yeah. But what did they say? They said, I, I missed it, but this is some huge amount of Gs. Like... Yeah, two fifty six. Two hundred. Is that okay, how many look, Gs if, you get in a crash? If your watch, if your watch experiences two hundred and fifty six Gs, you're dead. <laughs> it's like uh, there's, there's no other yeah. way for you to. Uh. But I, also well, the I mean, barometric it, it, pressure because it registers the airbag going off by the change in the barometric right. pressure. It does. That's part of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what they're obviously doing is uh, using machine learning. They showed a bunch of crashes. And they use machine learning. Well, what is it like? What is it? What's it what, what is the change in in the environment when you hit something really, really hard? And let's let some of them stable coin crashes, or is that yeah, different? Let's make, let's make made a model. <laughs> and then it will call emergency services. I know it's good for the ads. In fact, Apple even started the yep. uh, event with a big ad uh, for this stuff. I uh, like how the phone is in pristine condition while the car right. is out, just being destroyed. Around it, one of one of my family members shall not be remember name named got in a crash. <laughs> she was fine. The only problem was her phone went flying out the window, <laughs> and we never found it. So, so uh, yeah, I think she shall not be named, but we'll give you enough demographic data to make it. Yeah, I case. think. You, well, she doesn't have a phone. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> Two hundred fifty-six G's. Holy camoly. Um, all right, so this is—I mean, this is clearly Apple doubling down on what Tim Cook has always said, which is that the, our next big business is going to be health. It's going to be protecting you, and health I think and safety. That this is health and safety is a very nice place for them to be in. You know, they're already kind of owning the privacy space, whether it's marketing only or for real. They clearly own it. Now they're going to own this health and safety space. I think that's—you're going to—it's—they're going to get to the point where people are going to feel like Apple's taking care of them. And it's non-contentious. Like, it's not something that people are going to yell or scream or complain about as like, they might some other areas of business. They, right. We had seen a rumor that they were going to have temperature sensors, but what we didn't know is how much they were going to 
focus that on women, which again, brilliant, very smart. Um, yeah. Although the marketing what, move is definitely smart. What is, what do they call it? Retroactive ovulation. That sounds very sci-fi. <laughs> It's uh, uh, a cycle tracking via temperature changes. Yeah, but they won't basically. tell retroactive you retroactive ovulation. Is yeah. that like an Elon Musk thing? It sounds like, um, like a well, space I think it's because feature? temperature changes happen like like after or it's in more the, about like, population part of the cycle. Or something? They don't know your exact temperature, but they know how it's going up or down. It's all it's a relative right, trends. Yeah, relative temperature. We knew that. In fact, I have an aura ring that does the, the same thing, but. I think it's very smart of them to focus on women's health uh, for this thing. Because uh, neither Fitbit nor Samsung nor the Aura talk at all about cycle tracking. Apple, that was the number one bullet point. They spent a lot of time talking about that. And then this um, this thing about retroactive ovulation. I think they're trying to say, we can't tell you ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> but we could tell you a afterwards, or s I don't know. Um, I'll have to let uh, this was big. Yeah, this was big at CES about three years ago. There was a company I think called Comper that was selling devices that would do this. They would actually do ov uh, specifically ovulation tracking. Um, and actually, I think Apple bought them, didn't they? Ah, uh -huh. well, there you go. That, 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 that might would have been where they now. got the tech. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Good on you, mm. uh, Apple. Uh, I guess is all I can say. I, um, it's so it's more than just period tracking. I mean, it, it gives you uh, period predictions, a retroactive notification about your ovulation date, which you know the, people want to know about their ovulation uh, date either when they want to get pregnant or don't want to get pregnant. That's of course yeah. when you're most fertile. Unfortunately, knowing about it after the fact seems less useful, but I guess that's, <laughs> that's the best they can oh, do. Oh, yeah, I was pregnant. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, whoops. Um, First steps. Yeah. And again, probably one of the reasons Fitbit, which is owned by Google, Samsung, and Aura are having trouble doing this is privacy. We already know right. that peri many period tracking apps are, you know, disclose this information to third party data brokers. Very leaky. Very leaky not a good word to use when you're talking about this so <laughs> plus this takes a lot of the this takes a lot of the pressure off she hulk and star trek and lord of the rings right because people can that's yeah. right <clears throat> i'm sorry finish that you sentence know, the that, wait a minute no i, need I was just to gonna tell say me. I, I, I was just gonna say because people are so busy complaining about that apple actually focusing on features for women is going to give them a whole oh okay. new sphere to lose their fragile little minds over oh good thank goodness uh, yeah <laughs> i wasn't sure where you were going with that one um all right, so um, those are these are all good features, and I think that there is a lot to be said for Apple generating this goodwill with its users. Right, we're here to protect you. We're here to protect your privacy. We're here to ha help you with be more healthy. This is a good story. Both, Mark, uh, I, uh, go ahead. On a whole, I mean, of all the majors, even though I'm not an Apple fan, I would trust Apple with my personal data more than I would trust yes, Samsung, Microsoft, absolutely. or any of the big ones. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Both Ben Thompson and Jason Snell did point out that the modern-day Apple is much more interested in ARPU. We've talked about this before, the average revenue per user mm -hmm. in selling services. And in fact, interestingly, in the U.S., the iPhone prices did not go up. Uh, and, and I think they're charging less for the Watch Ultra than the comparable Garmin by a couple of hundred bucks. So Apple is either very sensitive to pricing or understands that it's more important that they get these devices in people's hands so that's that they been can true. make money on services. That's been true since China Mobile. China Mobile, like they got Verizon and then they got China Mobile a few years after that, and that was the last big uh, market for them to expand into, you know, absent there being one day Apple stores on Mars. And I think that's the moment, uh, and I think we talked about that on MacBreak for years, that they went from building up the iPhone to using the iPhone as a platform to build up not just services, but ancillary products like AirPods and Apple Watch. Yep. All of the Apple T, like all of those things are built, AirPlay, all those things are built on top of iPhone. And now they have expanded services from iCloud all the way through the stack. All of it, again, built on on iPhone. So it's, it's, an, it's an amazing platform play where once you get to a point where you can't have that many more customers, almost everybody who has an iPhone can afford an iPhone or wants an iPhone, you know, has that iPhone, you got to start 
getting more money from those same customers. And that's a whole shift in business model. Well, they know how to do it. That's pretty clear. Yeah.